welcome to the North Shore Community Association's podcast of July 4th, 2023. Today, we will present an interview with Melissa Young from Amsetel, who will be talking about the community organization. Then, we will cover community events and services on the North Shore of Quebec. Okay, cool. So to start, I'd love it if you could kind of just introduce yourself and then tell me a little bit about Amsetzil and your involvement with them. Yes, um, my name is Melissa Young. I've been working at Umsitzil since 2017. I left uh, for about two, three years to have two babies, <laughs> but um, I've been there ever since as basically an intervention worker. So we basically work uh, directly with men who might have uh, any kind of like social or health problems. So it's just easier for them to come to us because we're trained and informed on how men tend to have difficulties with reaching out with like, you know, doctors or social workers. So we have that kind of upper hand and we have a way of like, you know, reaching out to them where it's a lot uh, safer. They feel, you know, more secure in their asking for help. And what sort of projects and stuff are you involved with right now at this organization? Well, we have a lot of projects, to be honest. We were part of a lot of like a concerta concertation tables, I think that's what they're called. So we were on the table for the um, conjugal violence. Uh, we are also on the table for uh, anything that's a homicide. So we are able to evaluate any homicidal risks. Uh, we are also trained to uh, evaluate any suicidal risks. We also do father and uh, child activities that could vary from a camping activity that can take place over a weekend uh, where everything is uh, available to them, camping material, activities, and so on. And it could be as simple as just one activity, two hours where, uh, you know, it's a Nerf gun fight. Also, everything is, you know, provided. So, you know, they just show up and they have fun. And we kind of model uh, behavior uh, for them to kind of like, you know, adopt for, you know, more uh, interaction with their children during that play. We also do uh, what we call the man shed. So that is a mobile shed that we can kind of transport to different places to reach out to men who normally wouldn't ask for help for anything, but are kind of like, you know, good with their hands. So they'll come out and they'll help us, you know, work with some wood. Uh, they'll sometimes help younger kids who are trying to learn. Uh, and by doing so, well, we end up talking to them and it kind of comes to a point where it's like, oh, okay, well, sometimes I'm a little anxious and I don't feel that great. Or, oh, I'm a widow and I'm lonely and I'm still, you know, going through grief. And then up, then we have like an, an open door to kind of just you know do kind of intervention work with those type of people who normally would not ask for help we call those kind of like traditional men very stereotypical masculinity we also give trainings to other um social workers so we've been to blanca blanc we've been to harvest saint pierre procarche and we've done it a couple of times in Sicil, where we basically train people to better intervene with men to be conscious and aware of like you know certain things that are peculiar you know, basically to masculinity. So like, you know, men have a hard time helping, asking for help in general, because, you know, it's not a part of masculinity. Our masculinity is like, you're strong. You don't need to ask for help. You need to have the upper hand. You can't be weak. And, you know, asking for help is kind of like correlated with being weak. So we kind of like, you know, try to abolish that in, the, in those trainings, that ideology. Uh, the training that we received uh, to be able to train other people is by Gilles Tremblay and Pierre Leroux. So if ever you want to look those names up, uh, they're pretty uh, well known in the oh. in the domain of masculinity and uh, that clientele. Also, we have a Father's Day activity uh, that we do kind of like every two years because it is rather big. It's we rent out the whole arena here in Sitzil. There's uh, a lot of people that come and they donate and they, you know, do activities. So we have princesses that will do makeup. We have um, a kind of like a big uh, a gallon of water. And it's like, you know, you kind of have to throw the ball and the guy can fall in. There's blood rides. So it's very, very uh, varied in activities. So people, the whole community comes to that. We also do, well, individual work, of course. Men usually come for things like depression after a separation. So like if they're divorced or going through a separation and they're either losing custody or want to have custody, uh, they come see us. And then um, also for aggressive behavior. So we do have a group intervention where it's like a, they meet, it's 21 meetings and it's in a kind of context where it's like we have to meet in person, we sit down, we have to say like, okay, this week I used uh, violent behavior in for in so-and-so situation. I could have 
used an alternative, here's what I could have done. Or if they don't know what alternative they could have used, they can ask the group. So that's super beneficial. It's one of my favorite things about um, it It's really great and it's going super good in the sense that like once the guys start the program they don't want to you know they don't want to leave you know they want to finish it and i would say the the last thing that's super important that we do is we do house fathers and uh, i do like to like emphasize that it's, it could be anyone that's a father so not in the sense that like oh you have to have a child with you if you being housed by us allows you to consolidate that relationship with your child just because you have a, a roof over your head so you don't know you're allowed visitation rights or whatever well we will uh, evaluate and accept that father into the housing so we can now house uh, currently four fathers with their children ages vary we've had teenagers we've had young babies uh, we're well equipped to um, accommodate anyone and of any age and we also bought the house right next to our building where we will be able to accommodate even more fathers and their children. It's going to be kind of like a, a second phase where it's going to be more like apartment style. So they'll have their own kitchen instead of sharing a communal kitchen. So that's going to be really interesting too. It should be done by the end of the summer. So um, I think that resumes a lot of what we do. We do so much. So I could have forgotten a couple of things. We have other groups like for fathers. Uh, we have a prenatal class that we, uh, we do just for dads. So uh, the list could go on. <laughs> No, that's amazing. That's all really, really incredible work. I'd love to know what you think the importance of spaces like this is in your community. I think it's important just because in the statistics and what we see like in all of the research is that the people who are consulting the most for, you know, health with their uh, help with their health or their, um, you know, anything social is women. So all of the data that we have, all of the stats that we have are based off of, you know, a lot of women. So I feel like we kind of we leave out a lot of the men who one don't consult at all, but still go through a lot of, you know, depression, health, uh, physical health issues as well that they don't go get help for. What I think is important is that we have this kind of like communication with other organizations and the hospital. So like we have a really good uh, relationship with like most doctors so they can refer people to us. That's like our best allies, doctors and and nurses and and social workers. Us all working together allows it to be, make it easier for men to ask for help because the first person that they will go see is their doctor. So by them opening the door afterwards say hey you can go to Umsitzil or they can come here and meet you here it's it's super beneficial to have that in the community absolutely yeah and if people want to get involved either as like a volunteer to to help the cause or if someone is in need of assistance what's the best way to kind of get in touch and get involved there's many ways to get involved and get in touch i would say our facebook page is a really easy way to get in contact with us because we all have the facebook on our cell phones so anyone in the team can answer quite quickly um, otherwise, I would say give a call, 961-1530. Easy number to remember, you know, 15 times 2, 30 is what I tell people. So hard to forget. Also, our email. Our emails are all the same. It's our first name. So mine's Melissa. And it's all umsitzil.com. So umsitzil, H-O-M-M-E-S-S-E-P-T-I-L-S. So Perfect. it's ill in French, like men au pluriel. <laughs> Perfect. I think that's everything that I wanted to ask you today, but if there's anything else you want to share about the organization, um, I'd love to open it up to you now. Uh, that covers a lot. It's really incredible. Well, I would say we are interested in having volunteers. We, we would love to have volunteers for our man shed um and other types of activities that we do throughout the year so the doors open we are very very welcoming so if anyone's interested um we have a lot of english workers as well we're quite lucky for that cool that's fantastic thank you so much you're welcome the latest tourist attraction a road trip on the great northern loop this crescent-shaped trail is a favorite for those who love long road trips through immense stretches of unspoiled wilderness. Starting in Bécamo on Rue 389, the drive is 1,700 kilometers long and will take you at least 26 hours. It crosses Labrador from west to east on routes 500 and 510, then continues down to the lower north shore. The trail passes through boreal forest and taiga, 
it wins in and out of charming towns and villages where you can discover the lifestyle and culture of the francophone, anglophone and native communities. There are lakes, rivers and mountains where you can hunt and fish, rough it in the wilderness, hike and kayak and at the end of the day camp out under the northern lights. The curious can visit hydroelectric dams and open pit mines. Water is the best drink for the summer. During the warmer months, your body needs more fluids to keep you cool in the heat and humidity. And the best way to keep hydrated is to drink water. Here are tips to always have cold water on hand. Keep a water jug in the fridge. Keep multiple reusable bottles filled with water in the fridge. Keep a reserve of ice in the freezer. If your ice reserve is depleted, you can use frozen fruit to keep your water cool. And you can also fill up a third of a plastic bottle with water and then freeze it. You can then fill it up with tap water and enjoy cool fresh water for the rest of the day. Keep in mind that being well hydrated protects you from heat strokes. It's important to stay safe while you stay cool this summer. Every summer, children and adults alike enjoy going to the beach or relaxing by their home pool. To ensure the safety of all, there are measures you can take when you are near a body of water. Check out the Government of Canada and Government of Quebec websites for more information. Links from the Canadian Red Cross and the Government of Canada are provided in the description below. In other news, CHSSN, or Community Health and Social Services Network in Quebec, was pleased to announce that the provincial cabinet approved the long-awaited regional access plan on May 31st. This plan governs the ability of health and social services in English at each CIS and CIUS. The access plan is an integral part in the ability to offer English language services to our community members and allow us to work together to identify service areas within our health system. It also permits us the opportunity to identify collaborative initiatives to help increase the offer of English language services. You can obtain more information on the topic on the CHSSM's website. An introduction to pronouns. A practice that has become increasingly popular has been to share your personal pronouns when introducing yourself to someone new. You may see it in a new work setting, an email signature, or even in someone's bio on social media. Sharing pronouns is a way to make sure that no one in your current company is being misgendered. It's also a way for cisgender folks to show genderqueer people that this is a safe space to share how they would like to be addressed. Cisgender means you still identify with the gender that was assigned to you at birth. For folks who do not use pronouns that they were assigned at birth, it can be intimidating to share if they are the only ones doing so. The personal pronouns you are probably most familiar with are she, her, and he, him. These are the pronouns that most cisgender people use. Many binary trans folks, meaning trans men and trans women who identify within the gender binary, will also use she, her, and he, him. There is a broad spectrum of pronouns and combinations of pronouns that are integral to many queer identities. For example, many non-binary people use the singular they, them pronouns. Some will use a combination of she and they or they and he. Some will use she, he, and they. There are also neo-pronouns, which a lot of queer folks feel best represent themselves. These include, but are not limited to, ze, zem, or fe, fair. Though these are less common, they are not as uncommon as you may think. Many people will also use these in combination with she, her, he, him, or they, them. These are a few examples, but the possibilities go on. The best way to know what someone's pronouns are is to ask. An easy way to do so is to share your personal pronouns and then ask the person you're speaking with if they're comfortable sharing theirs. If they use a combination, try to switch it up when you're speaking about them so that they feel like the scope of their gender identity is being respected. If you misgender someone, a wildly preferred response is to quickly correct and move on as to not make a bigger scene than it needs to be. Mistakes happen, but how we address them and make an effort to be better is what's most important. Please remember that this is just the tip of the iceberg, and there is much more learning to do when it comes to pronouns and gender identity. We would 
would like to thank our sponsor for this podcast, the Secretariat aux Relations avec les Québécois d'Expression Anglaise.